<sighs> that's that's Yeah, it's one of those days where nothing works. Um, I think it should be back to single sounds now. I hope the soundboard works though. Thank you, they are going. They are going exe for the sub. Man, I haven't been on AOPS on this computer in so long that I can't log in. I want edit mode? No. Uh, Alright. I'm from Brazil and love your book. Thanks. Glad you like it. Uh, probably the Geo one. Let's make guess. Okay, now FTW doesn't want to load either. Uh, <laughs> it is one of those days. Nothing's working. Uh, hello? Huh. I thought I enabled. Okay. Did I like press the did not enable button or something? Uh, well. Alright. Thank you, Circle Theorem, for the sub. I pressed allow and nothing happened. <sighs> Am I using Edge? This is I'm on Firefox right now. Um mm. yeah. No. No! Stop. <sighs> Alright. <laughs> so those days. It's like when I started trying to play or starting to stream, it didn't actually work today either. Oh, uh, it was just like I tried to log in and it wouldn't let me. Or sorry, I started to start the stream and it started throwing errors at me and I'm like, well, okay, it's one of those days. Yeah, I, I don't think FTW is going to work today. 
Uh, that's very sad. Man, why can't I run Flash? Firefox disable completely. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. It might have just gotten killed in the latest update. Because on when I'm in California, my computer is on Ubuntu, so like updates are very slow um, to come out. Whereas you can hack it back. Uh, Yep, I, don't, I think this is not going to work today. <sighs> Well, that was, that was an underwhelming start to the stream. Uh, <sighs> I'm sorry for anyone that wanted to play 1v1s today. I, I don't know why Flash won't play today. Let's just play Hanabi instead. Uh, let, let's do math first. How about that? I don't think I'm going to have this fixed by 10.30. Um... Okay, so I, I will take problem requests now because we, we apparently can't play FTW today. Thank you, and Prime 06 for the cheer. Yeah, I've done 1990 Problem 3 for, um... Dr. Ramon, unfortunately. I'll take the other requests. Uh...
Okay. Nineteen ninety six. I don't. I probably have not done IMO nineteen ninety problem six for Doctor Redman. Um, so, oh, that is a request. Okay, yeah, I can take that one. Um, thank you, three VT, for the twenty five bit cheer. Got the farm. It's okay. Okay, and then there's some Geo. Okay, so here's the candidates for today, I think. The Friendship Theorem says Evan is a great friend. Oh, thanks. Uh, China TST. Oh, Lord. Evan, how immature am I? If the end, if you have to ask that question, the answer is not. <laughs> yeah. Evan, why do people find you intimidating? I have no idea. All right. Okay, so... Thank you, Flamestorm, for the 15-bit... Can I have your thoughts on G6? No comment. Oh, was there a China TST? Alright. The China TST was mentioned by... Where is it? Can whoever sent that China TST problem post it again? Test 2, problem 6, thanks. Yeah. Since it's someone who just subscribed, I'll take the request even though it wasn't submitted through the usual queue.
I'm confused. Oh, oh, the, the unsourced problem is the China TST problem. Uh, they are going. Okay, wait for for uh, Thea Gwen XC. Can you post the problem again? I don't think I got it. Um. Two thousand twelve, day one, day one, problem two. Okay, gotcha. All right. Okay, so here's the poll. There, yeah, so I'll give you all a few minutes to decide which ones you want to do. What happens if you don't get to a problem? That happens all the time. Um, I just refund the points back to the user and then they can submit it again whenever they want. So you, you, only, you only pay the points if the problem actually gets done. Oh man, I might have to do the friendship theorem today. <laughs> Looks like I'm not getting out of it. <laughs> Oh my god. He's back. Ugh.
Okay, let's see. Okay. Alright, thanks for your input, friends. So it looks like we're starting from SMO 2020 prompt 5. Alright, so we're... Okay. That's not supposed to happen. Uh, why is that up there? Alright, so let's do the geo. Okay, so BFC is cyclic. Then I should have started differently. Um, so let's take B equals zero. Uh, let, let's take the circle first, actually. Oh, zero, zero. So here's like a random circle. And we'll just let BC be points on it. Okay, did I get the... <laughs> nice stream title. Okay. Oh, frick. It's really one of... If the problems go as badly as tech tech technology today, I'm going to like, I don't know. Yeah, about the technology. Uh, <laughs> uh. Echo should be gone by now. If not, you'll let me somewhere. Echo screen discard. I don't understand why that convention is so high level, actually, because it seems like you, you want to know what it is for the sake of understanding the normal screen discards. Ah, oh. Boop. Okay, and then M is the midpoint of BF, N is the midpoint of CE, U is the foot of the perpendicular from P to BC. Why do you have to call it that? That's fine. U equals P line BC, line BC. Okay, and BMU and CNU meet somewhere, okay. How do you rename points with command? Uh, rename point string. So 
So like rename DV. For example. Okay, so inversion. Uh, I don't know if I want to invert to start. I, I feel like I want to start with spiral sim, honestly, at the midpoints. So, uh, yeah. What what if I just complex bash the problem? Can I just do that? What if I just use complex numbers? Because <laughs> here's what you would do. You would say, uh... Th this is like the pole of EF intersect BC. M is a midpoint, that's easy. N is easy. U is the foot, that's easy. Um, and then, you know, you use the spiral similarity to get V. Uh... The problem is I'm, I'm really out of shape, so I don't know if I could pull it off correctly. Um, well, okay, well, let's uh, let's ask the people. Yes. Okay, I, th I think that's that's fine. Okay, well, we'll do synthetic. So the first thing I want to say is that I think A and P look like they're bait, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna, for lack of a better name, we'll call Q. Uh, we're gonna define Q to be the intersection of line EF and BC. And the reason I don't like this line AP is because by Brocard's theorem, um, both points lie on a very nice line. It's called the polar of Q. Uh, oh, if you're a subscriber, your votes count triple. That, that's how the denominators change. Um. <laughs> Capitalism! Wait, you guys didn't know that? I thought I said that. I mean, you don't... If, if you have Amazon Prime, you don't have to pay to subscribe. You just... You get one free subscription per month. So, I don't know. If you have Amazon Prime and you want your votes to count triple, now you know how. Uh, why won't this pop out? Ah! <sighs> Today is not a good day. How do I close this window? Do I press that button? Close. Amazing. <sighs> do I get money from subs? Oh, yeah, I get like $2.50. <laughs> it's not very much, so... Everyone looks sleep deprived today. Well, I'm still a little jet lagged. Anyways, so my point was like, this is the pole. Um, so, you know, I can, I think at this point I can I just ignore A and B. Like, I don't think they matter anymore. Uh, it looks like B, F, E, C is the more important quadrilateral. So let's be if you see, I will say goodbye to point A, I'll say goodbye to point P. We can add them back later if we need them, but I don't I don't see any reason why A would be important right now. Do you need P for you? Oh shoot, good point. Okay, maybe we can keep P. Uh yes, that, that's a good point. Uh Oh, man, why can't I just use complex numbers? <sighs> Rip A. So I want PV to be okay.
What do I do with these midpoints? Are these like perpendiculars from O or do I want to do something else? What do I do with these random midpoints? Is V like going to just be the Mikkel point? That's too dumb, right? It's not going to be that silly. Uh. <sighs> but I feel like there's a Mikkel point somewhere. Um. Wait, are FP, Q, V concyclic? No, that's not even close. Okay, well, I'm going to introduce the Mikkel point anyways, so, um, I'm out of letters. R, R, R equals, uh, frick, how do I define this? No, it is. It totally is. I I'm not stupid. Okay, uh... Yeah, it's totally going to be the kill point of the self-intersecting quad. Okay, so I drew the wrong quad. Um, why did I... Alright. How does the kill point work? I don't remember anymore. I mean, I'm too old for this. Uh, 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 okay. Why'd the music stop? So... Uh, let's, let's try this again. Uh, VFC. I was like, I swear that's a big kill point, and then I kept drawing all the wrong circles. But this is the one. You want this quadrilateral. And this quadrilateral, there's the point P, and the McKell point will be like O, B, E, O. Yeah, so we'll redefine V as the McKell point, because if it's in there, then like you have so much power. So uh, we'll redefine V as the McKell point of self-intersecting quadrilateral BFCE. So it lies on like a gazillion circles and uh, somehow I was not able to find any of them but uh wait no 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 uh OBC yeah OBC what are the other ones it lies on OVQ collinear, yeah. Yeah, because if V is the Mikkel point, OVQ collinear follows automatically. So, when there's a Mikkel point, there should be a bunch of cyclic quads as well, and somehow I just can't draw them because I'm old. Um, they should be like... I swear BFPP is cyclic, is it not that one? Yeah, it is cyclic. Didn't I try this one earlier? Ah! Okay, whatever. Okay, so we'll redefine V. And this also, the reason this is so good is because it tells us how do you deal with the two circles because there's always a smile similarity thing. And also it tells you how to deal with um, the midpoints. So we redefine V as mid call point and so it satisfies like uh, freaking gazillion properties. And then V is the center, for this problem the one that's relevant is V is the center of smile similarity mapping BF to EC, hence M to N. And so V will automatically be the Mikkel point of a bunch of other circles involving M and N. So V is the Mikkel point of B, M, E, N. And 
That also means it lies on more circles, and I'm going to screw up trying to draw them. Uh, how do I draw these circles? Maybe I want A back after all. Alright, fine. We'll put A back because it's the intersection that... Yeah. A, B, N. Wait, no. Ah. P, M, E, N. Alright. Okay, oh, so the point is that, okay, I, I see there's a point here and there's a point here. Amazing. So, we don't have U for now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to define MN to meet B, E, and C F at two points X and Y, which will get mangled, so let me correct the names. When did you use U equals project P? I haven't used U yet. We were already defining P as the... the Cool. So V is my call point. V M N. Uh, define X and Y. And V. So V lies on B M X and C and Y by my call point properties. So it remains to show that the foot U, though we haven't dealt with yet. Like so far, everything is just straight McKell. And the only thing we haven't done is what? What about? this P and U, and I just want U to lie here. So I want the foot from U to lie on like this circle. And why is that true? I have no idea. Let's find out. Uh, are, are there any angles here I can control? U. Oh man, what do I do about you? <laughs> I, I have these two great cyclic chords, I just need the foot to tie with the midpoint. Um... <laughs> X is probably not that useful of a point right now, right? Uh, well... Mm. Um, what do I do? Why is there a midpoint? <sighs> this was on the IMO 15 years ago. Is this like the 2003 problem? I don't remember this thing about the foot though. I remember like the midpoint feeling, which is why I was so certain that it had to be in a kill point and then it got confused when none of the circles that you passed through it. Um, but what is, do I do with this foot? Can I just complex bash now? Like I know the chord is in all the points. Uh, uh, Ah. Jeez. What do I do with this foot? Do I draw the circle with diameter PQ? I bet that's it. All right, let's let's draw that circle. Oh, it passes through V too, how convenient. Um, really? The circle passes through? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay, I see. Uh, okay, so these are both right angles, so those four points are cyclic. And then the. Okay, so V lies on PUQ is actually the first step. And then the spiral similarity gives you BMX, C, and Y. V and so now I just need U to lie on that circle as well. And now I have the angle I want. 
So angle BUV is like... Oh, freak. I should be able to just angle chase it. Why? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where's the angle chase? So, directed angle BUV is equal to directed angle BPV, which is equal to directed angle... Sorry, not BUV. Uh, if I use this circle I have, it's equal to directed angle QPV. So it's the angle between Q and like its polar, which, I mean, is just... something. Uh, it's some angle. It's angle POA or something, or it's complement or something like that. Okay, and meanwhile, BMV is 90 minus OVM. Why am I... <sighs> BM, okay, I need BMV. Um, like, so, QPV is an angle I believe I have control over, because it's just tied to this polar. So now I need to move this angle onto the polar as well. Um, oh, that midpoint is so bad. It's like the angle between... the heck? Oh, do I want AMNV? Uh, <sighs> fine. Fine, we control that circle too. That might also assist the angle chase. Um, I see, okay, this is, this is how you deal with BMV. It's equal to AMV, which is ANV. Like, somehow, at this point, I should be in familiar territory, but because I am old, I feel out of place. It's CNV. Okay, so BMV and CNV are these angles. I still haven't gotten rid of the midpoint, it's still there. Why is the midpoint still there? Get rid of it. Ah, I mean, I know the angles are evil, though. Uh, A, N, V. Oh, do I transfer? Oh, I transfer it through O. Right, because O also... Okay, fine. Ugh, A, M, V. Equals A, O, V. Okay, so I'll write QPA here. AOV. It's AOQ. And this is true. It's APOQ is an orthic quadruple, i.e. each point is the orthocenter of the other three. Okay, we did it. I'm really surprised no one's ever told me about this point U, actually. What, was this point at the IMO? On the IMO problem in 2003? Orthocent- okay. Orthocentric system. How about that? 
Yeah, yeah, we're, we're done. This is it. Um... I just surprised- I feel like someone should have told me about that point, you. I'm like... Surprised it lies on all these important cycles, and no one ever told me. I guess the midpoints are not that important. Or something. By, by important, I mean like that key. <sighs> okay, you is new. That, that's what I suspected. Like, I feel like if this. For this point to lie on these three circles, I feel like I'm surprised no one told me about it. But now I know, so. Okay, I guess that's. Huh. That's strong. Lies on the two midpoint ones. Okay. How do we go a O on AMN? Because these are both right angles. Like OM is perpendicular to BF and ON is perpendicular to CE. YQPV is SVA. Did I typo? QPV is QP8? Wait, what? QP- oh, uh, that, that's just directed angles. Like, what happened to FTW? Uh, I couldn't figure out how to get Flash to work on my computer. <laughs> Today was a- yeah, QPV is equal to QP8 because it's just a directed angle. Like, APV are collinear because of Brocard's theorem, which says that uh, V is online AP, roughly. You assume V is- yeah, th this follows from the fact that V is a Mikhail point. Um, by Brokart's theorem, AP is the polar of Q, and by Mikhail theory, um, the Mikhail point is actually the inverse of Q. Like, V is the point on the polar, such that- You can think of it as actually V is defined as OQ intersect AP, and then satisfies all the spiral similarities. Yeah, so, when I do this first refit definition, so P lies on PUQ, uh, is with a bunch of things. So this means like V lies on AP, uh, APV is perpendicular to OQ, etc. Is this going on Otis handout? Definitely. You missed the prompt request time? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope next week I have figured out why Flash decided to stop working, but today was a day where I logged in and I like 10 minutes before the stream I pressed start stream and it gave me an error message asking me to upgrade like some kernel driver or something and I was like oh oh no <laughs> and it all went downhill from there <laughs> oh, okay all right so um are we doing friendship theorem next? If flash doesn't work... Well, I think I should just fix the. See, the problem is I'm too brain dead to play Amy... I I'm not fast enough for Amy countdowns now. So if I try to play an Amy countdown, it just won't end well. All right, let's prove the friendship theorem, guys. What difficulty do you think it was? I agree with the decision to place it at Yusumo 2.5. I don't think it's a problem we want to put at Yusumo 1.4 because the people that haven't finished Egmo stand no chance. Or, not stand no chance, but like it's not a 1.4 for them. Yeah, I think 20 Moses is a good rating for that poem.
Pathis has 30, ooh. I can see 25 as well. Like, it sort of depends on how much you want, you think, um, knowing Mikhail's stuff should be rewarded. Okay. Where do you get this playlist of music? Pretzel.rocks. I can see 25. Um, I don't think it should be 30. Okay, so every pair of vertices is exactly one common neighbor. Wait, that's not that's not true. Uh, no, that's true. What is the universal vertex? Is a vertex adjacent to everyone? So basically, the only graphs that have this property are these um, triangle-looking graphs that look like so-and-so. Thank you for the follow from Digimon. Evan is- yep. <laughs> okay. Oh, jeez. I, I actually just- So the first something is that um, sum of degree v choose two. Like you're counting shapes that look like this, and you're told that this is literally exactly um, n choose two. Which is. Fine. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I have no idea what this tells you. This tells you the average degree is like... Yeah, it is not a great statement. So if the average de if the... This is a 102 combo. Why are you writing it that way? Uh, I just wrote a statement. I I have. Do you have a different suggestion from Geico Lizard? I don't know how you got that. Oh, um, sorry, th this is not equivalent to the statement, it's implied by it. It's just like you double count, you double count things that look like this, and on the one hand, there's exactly one of them. If you, the hypothesis tells you if I pick just like two like that, you get exactly one. Um, on the other hand, uh, if you count it by this guy, you get this. degree x choose 2 is convex i don't know if an inequality will work because like uh th the thing that's happening right now is like n minus 1 choose 2 plus 2 times n minus 1 is n choose 2 is true and it's not clear to me that size is obviously an obstruction write it as a statement the adjacency matrix a has one outside that oh wait is that true can we just say this is the only case? Uh, go for it. <sighs> okay, well, okay, I, I want to see what happens when I do the adjacency matrix. So if A is the adjacency matrix, which means there's zeros on the diagonal and then things elsewhere, A squared is the number of, yeah, two paths. So 
what you should get is on the on the diagonal um you get the degrees and off the diagonal you just get one everywhere Can I do some graph Laplacian stuff to kill the diagonal too? Probably. If I maybe if I instead of zero here I write like uh, I never remember what it is. It's minus degree. So that rums, rows minus sums are zero, I see. So the graph is, so it's automatically like... Okay, uh, I will, I'll, t I'll humor the suggestion to put minus degree on the diagonal and see what happens. So if we do that, then on the diagonal, what do I get? I get like degree squared minus degree. Like twice that degree choose two? Is that right? I think so. And what happens off the diagonal? Um, no, I don't like it. You get like more junk on the diagonal if you do it this way, right? Uh, like your off diagonal entries will be like um, one minus like Degree V, maybe? No, I think it's better if we leave them as zero, just straight adjacency matrix. Now, what do I do with this matrix? Mm Am I wrong about that? If I if I put minus degree on the diagonal, uh, like what happens? I take eigenvalues. I really want to. It's like you 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 talk about the eigenvalues of the adjacency graph and the eigenvalues of the squared guy and try to string them together. A squared minus all ones matrix, yeah. Unfortunately, this is like kind of outside my. <sighs> this is this is outside the scope of things I normally do, so I'm going to kind of stumble around and die. Um... Like, how do I take the determ- how, how do I compute the eigenvalues? Haven't you taught eigenvalues before or something? Um... I... Only, like, conceptually. Like, I'm not actually very good at doing any calculations with anything. Take an eigenvalue v and do stuff. Well, I think the point is you want to you I want to extract the entire spectrum of a. Like, what are the, all the eigenvalues of a, and what all are eigenvalues of a squared, and then put them to. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I'm good at arithmetic. Um, yeah, but I don't. It feels kind of stuck to me. Like I don't think I know the linear algebra with the matrices well enough to push this through. Unless someone has an idea, in which case I want to hear it. But I don't see what I'm supposed to do with this. Uh, 
In general, what's the determinant of an adjacency matrix? The spectrum of J is nice. Does that tell you anything about the spectrum of A squared minus J? Yeah, we could, we could keep, I think if I wanted to solve the problem quickly, the correct thing to do is to like leave the linear algebra for when I have time to actually learn linear algebra and try to actually solve the problem instead of play with fancy tools. Um, so I'm trying to decide what's more useful. <laughs> do I want to try fancy things or do Hongo? This can be a learning experience. It might be a learning experience that using fancy things you don't know well is a bad idea. <laughs> like we might just sit here and like flail around. We can we can sit here and flail around. That's fine. Uh, I just what are those eigenvalues of an adjacency matrix in general? Let me grab my notes. Uh. Yeah, like there, there's uh oh, uh, thank you to Evan Chen is an is Asian account. <laughs> I think for for the follow. Uh, yeah, like there, there, there's a whole field called spectral graph theory about like looking at spectrums of like matrices attached to graphs and I don't know any of it so I, I know one thing which is that the uh, I know two things actually the number of spanning trees is the determinant of the Laplacian up to some sign I don't remember and or yeah and also like bipartite graphs are uh what is it? Bipartite graphs have spectrum symmetric around the origin. Oh, just around zero, actually, the real numbers. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry, I'm just going to do combo. Um, I, I don't see this going anywhere because there's, there's, there's theorems, and I don't know the theorems, and... I'm unlikely to rederive them quickly enough to make this stream a useful experience. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, if you want to look up the theorems while I'm trying to do combo, you're welcome to. If you can piece together a solution, I'd be interested in it. Uh, yeah, minor of Laplacian. Is this the unique graph? I think so. Um, can we look at max min degree vertex? I think that's probably a good idea. Um, I'm trying to decide whether I want min or max. Min might be easier because... Uh, min could be easier because like the two the degree two vertices are easier to think about, I guess. Um, so for example, what if I have... First of all, I have the global bound. It should tell me something about what the average degree is. The average degree is whatever it is in the equality case. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, or is, sorry, at least what it is in the equality case. Okay, so the average degree, um, if I if I use Yanzen, and choose two is the sum of the degrees choose two. Degree choose two, which is um, at least three times n minus one over n. Sorry, I I'm doing it the wrong way. So, n times average degree. 
Oh wait, this is really good. The average degree is strictly less than three. So that will get that that will give us a bit of power. Um No, wait, yeah, this is not tight. Shoot. No! No! So uh Jensen is nowhere near tight here. Oh no, that's not good. Uh so you get like average is like less than like ah. Doesn't every edge have to be part of a triangle? Wait, is that just true? Maybe I should just do a problem instead of trying to like write down a mm. Yes, every edge has to be part of a triangle, that is true. Uh oh my god. Yeah, this is called actually think a little bit. <laughs> so every edge is part of a triangle. Okay, second question. Can triangles overlap? No. Uh, by They cannot overlap by edges. Okay, okay this, is, this is actually a lot. <laughs> so, the, uh, why is everything part of a triangle? Like, if I have an edge... Uh, the, the hypothesis is that there, there exists a common neighbor. So every edge is part of a unique triangle, actually. Yeah, it's, it's just by the, by the bomb statement. So we have the interesting situation where I have triangles, and they can't overlap by edges. So what I can do is I can consider... Blocks. I want to take the block decomposition of the graph, um, by which I mean you know, there's a triangle, and whenever there's another triangle, like it, it looks like this. Um, well, maybe I can just say like y you can consider the blocks, and then like some of the blocks are large cycles or triangles. Yeah. Well, my goal is to show that there isn't. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, like, suppose there's, a uh, there, there's, like, okay, I think basically what I want is I want every two triangles to share a vertex. So what happens if I have two triangles and they don't share a vertex? We think this can't happen. And why can't it happen? Um... Well, if I have two triangles that don't share a vertex, then I can take an edge. Uh, not an edge. T take uh, this vertex and this vertex, and there should be like... Okay. So these guys have a common neighbor. Um... These guys have a common neighbor that's... Not this guy. And these guys have a common neighbor that's not this guy. Or something like that. Is that, does that work out? Yeah, I mean, th there should be something wrong with this, and it's that... Even more caught. There are no K4 minus edges in G. Uh, not only are there no K4 minus edges in G, there's just no K4s either. Yeah, for Warren. Um. <sighs> okay, what if I just say this guy and this guy need to have a common neighbor? Oh, wait, they do. It's this vertex. Okay, so this is the common vertex. And this is a common... Okay, so... Shoo. Hmm, alright. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I guess the you sort of just get nine common neighbors actually. Um, so <laughs> no two not common neighbors can coincide because every vertex is adjacent to at most one guy in the triangle. So maybe I better draw it like this or something. So you have this, 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 and then like for every pair of vertices, there's like a thing that looks like that. I'm assuming this will cause some problems of some sort. Is that right? So the picture looks like this. If there happens to ever be two triangles that completely don't touch. I still don't feel like this is the right way to go about it, actually. What I want is just no triangles um, to kind of dangle against each other. Like I want a triangle, like I want the property that if I have a triangle and another triangle and they touch, if I, if I can assume they touch, um, then I want them to touch at the same vertex. Oh, but then you get a large cycle of triangles? Ah, So I have to rule this case out anyways. Okay, well, okay, let's just, let me just look at this. I feel like I'm overthinking this. That graph is wrong. Oh, what did I mess up? Two of the blue vertices connect to the other one on the triangle. And one blue vertex. I'm 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 not following. Oh, oh, okay, so the problem is... No, 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 blue versus Jason. Um... I don't like this. Uh... Can I just prove the... Can I look at the vertex with minimal degree? Or something and try to show it's only in one place. <sighs> yeah, cause, okay, l l let me draw different pictures. I'm a little confusing myself because the point is like for every vertex we know that around it it looks like a like quality case ish like we know there's a thing here and there's a you know its neighbors are all like this and then maybe there's some more stuff that's not connected to it
But there's no new edges in here. Like, if I take every vertex and look at just its neighbors, it's a friendship graph. Um, it's like... There's no other edges. So... What if we connect to vertices, wink, wink, contract? Seriously? I don't really don't want to contract. Like what I'm thinking is, what, let's let's imagine you had the bad shape that we had earlier. Um, where, what, what are we worried about? It's like another triangle and then like another triangle and another triangle off it. Um, like, the case I'm trying to avoid is... Let, let me draw better. I want to show this graph can't appear. Like, once a triangle has one vertex chosen, then it, yeah. And what happens is when I look around here, and I look around here, they look like friendship graphs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a Venn diagram, because why not? Of vertices that are... Um, in one friendship graph, but not the other. Yeah, this will... And so let's get these names. A, B... Oh, fine, we'll use VW. Okay, right, and the hypothesis is that, no, they, they, they have a... They're part of a triangle, that's fine. But there's like some guy here, and there's also some guy here. And then, uh... Yeah, actually they're all in disjoint triangles. So... I think it has to look like this. And the point... Uh, yeah, maybe there's some stuff hanging off here, who knows. Uh... But actually that's the only overlap, like the... If I look near V and near W... A universal vertex is a vertex adjacent to everyone else. Yeah, so I want to show this can't happen. I, I feel like this just shouldn't be able to happen. Uh, because if I... I just take like any pair of... Like, you take two vertices that are not in the same chunk. If A, B, B, C, do we have A, C? No. Um, and there should be, they should be part of a triangle or something. Or they, they should have a common neighbor. Does this break something? No, just one of these is not enough. Uh, I really feel I should just be able to run the problem over. <sighs> Good. Are pentagons bad? Like, is there a reason I expect not to have a 5 cycle? Actually, pentagons seem pretty okay. It's like every pair does have an adjacent...
Yeah, this doesn't look like I kill off possibilities like that and something like that. It's possible. Yeah, it'd be real nice if I could produce some vertex as degree too, but I think my bound isn't good enough. My bound is that the average degree is like about the square root of n. We think in the true equality case, the average degree is like 3. Like less than 3 actually. But um, if you just use straight Yensen, you don't get a bound that's good enough. It's possible we can improve the bound, but I don't immediately see how. But what can I do with a vertex which has a low degree? Like, if the degree is low enough that, um... Okay, so, again, around every vertex, there's... It looks like a friendship graph. So I have some low degree vertex. Well, because the degree is low, the average degree was we saw like less than like root n ish. And um Any two vertices have total degree at most n plus one. Yeah, actually, this feels really bad. Um, uh, actually, maybe it's... Mm. Like, if I have a vertex of low degree, it's not connected to very many things. Like, degree less than, like, root n-ish. It's not connected to many things, and so... Thank you, Mango Mo, for the follow. If you consider degree 2 vertex part of the triangle, you just win. For Brian ZJK about when I take a game request, um, after about three or four problems, I think. It sort of depends on how tired I get from doing the math. Um, VS degree two part of- what do you mean by degree two part for Night of Minds? Oh, yeah, I agree if there's a vertex of degree 2, it should you should just be able to delete them. I, I agree. However, I, I don't see how to show a vertex. Our bounds on the degree for the min degree are about like root n. Um, Yeah, Max had an idea where, uh, oh, okay, yeah, because the degrees, the sum of the two degrees um, is less than n, which is fine. Uh, mm -hmm. Wait, that was that one's actually sharp. No, it's not. Uh, wait, what? Did I did I do something stupid earlier? 
I don't think that the ensign is not sharp, right? So I don't expect this estimate here to give me what I want. Root n. Learner, which graph are you talking about? Yeah, th this one is uh, like this guy here, for example, and this guy, these two, don't share a common neighbor. <sighs> Small degree vertices should call problems. Why? Because for every other vertex, there should be a common neighbor, and it must be one of the ones that it's touching. So that means the degrees of... So if I have a low degree vertex, like about n, then almost every other vertex... Um, Yeah, for like the n minus d guys here, each of them have to touch exactly one other vertex out here. I don't know if that does anything. Um, so you would get some vertex of degree pretty large, at least root n. That doesn't, that doesn't seem like that's a size construction, abstraction though. All your neighbors have degree at least d plus one halves. Wait, is there a reason I can't just delete these guys? Um, no, of course not. Why, why, what am I doing? Wait, actually, can someone tell me why it was true that if I found a vertex of degree 2, I could just kill it? Um, that seems like not obvious to me suddenly. die. <laughs> Why do you die? Uh... You get a C4. Isn't it C5?
Wait, okay, so when you link the common neighbor of A prime and B prime with V, mm, okay, let, let me let me draw out what you're trying to say. So what you're saying is, okay, suppose we have a known vertex of degree two, A B, and then there's like some triangle hanging off here, some triangle hanging off here. And then, you know, A prime and B prime should have some common neighbor. Yeah, so what goes wrong? C has to link with A or B. I don't think that's true. Wait, why is that true? Since it has a common neighbor with V. Oh, oh, right, because those are the only... Ah, okay, I get it, I get it. Right, so you have to have at least one of these two edges. Okay, I see. Got it. Got you. Um, right, th that is correct. Okay, can I do something similar here? So here I have the same shape, and then... Um, isn't this a C5? No, like you get a C4 when you... Um, this is a C4. Can't you force it to degree 2 somewhere? Uh, please do! I've been trying since the start of this problem. Uh, yeah, if you can't if you can prove to me there's a vertex to degree 2, I'm done. Uh, just like... Edges are part of disjoint triangles, that is correct. No, it doesn't violate Jensen. That was the very first thing I tried, and we concluded that it only told you that you can find a vertex of degree at most like root n. No, Jensen did not say average degree was less than 3. The true average degree is less than 3, but the Jensen only gave you about square root n. And the reason is that at the equality case, there's one vertex with a very large degree and the others have a very small degree. So you don't expect Jensen to give you the right result. It's, it's like very far from the equality case of Jensen. There are at most entries two edges, I agree. <laughs> All right, yeah. I think the most promising thing I have feel like I have um is this thing. Like root n is actually still a pretty small degree. Uh What does that I think other people have audio. All right, so let's look at a small. I ask, I think the other thing that's really strong that we have is because we know that all the edges are in triangles. So we know that locally, like if I look around any vertex, it looks like a bunch of graph, and yeah. Jensen bounding PS. Why do I pronounce Jensen like a Y? Is that not the correct pronunciation?
Oh, I can prove that you connect not connected to V implies degree U equals degree V. Oh, uh, that sounds really strong. <laughs> okay, let, let's. Yeah, that that might be the answer. That that sounds pretty good. So, let's say you have U and V, and they're not connected. Consider the BFS tree. So, okay, the idea is you have a... Okay, all right, BFS, that's fine. So, breath first search. So if we do, uh, yeah, if we root the graph, layer layer one, layer one edges are possible. Yes. So yeah, maybe the tree looks something like this. Okay, and then if I look at uh, someone in layer two. Yeah, actually the BFS tree just looks really good. Uh, like, it's like... Because every... There's no edges within any layer other than the triangle ones, right? Uh... Yeah, so you kind of just die because... If I consider... Or if I do literally anything, like these need to have a common... Yeah, okay, wow. Uh, right, okay, because it looks locally like a friendship graph, it follows that um, the structure of the graph just kind of looks like this. Okay, what is it in the equality case? Is it just like... I feel like at... Someone really feels like I should be able to do like basically anything and like it'll... it'll... work. You can have layer 2 to layer 2 edges. Um... So I take a child of U that's not that happens to be anything other than a parent of V. These have a common neighbor, so
Well, this, this one's a common neighbor, right? If I just look there. Um, so I want to look like here or something. Yeah, so I want to look here. And now, now I'm... I just have something that looks like that. But you need one of these for every vertex. Is that right? Okay. Okay, I agree. This this means that... Yeah, and then there's two more green ones. Fine. So I agree degree V is, equal to, is at least degree U. Running the argument in reverse, degree U is at least degree V. So any two non-adjacent vertices have the same degree. Okay, so the argument is as follows. Um, honestly, BFS tree is, un is not... Wait, the tree also has depth at most too. Yeah, the, gra the graph should be pretty regular. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, the claim is, suppose U is not adjacent to V. Like, assume U is not adjacent to V and then... Draw, draw a pretty picture. In fact, I won't even bother to draw these other triangles, they don't matter. Um, here. So here, here's the vertex, you know, triangle, triangle, whatever. And... Uh, if I consider common neighbors of, like, this guy with this guy, let's call this one X. Um, X can't use... X can't share anything with, like, this, this is not allowed, for example. So, there has to be, like, a separate triangle here somewhere. And similarly, you get such a triangle for each of these other four. So, you get, like, at least degree U minus 2. Like, for each of these, you get at least that many, um edges in red and all of them hit v so what that means is once you add in also the two green edges at v conclude that if u is not adjacent to v degrees are same okay so now i have a question which is you shouldn't be able to have um maybe maybe you can actually ah i don't know but it should imply the graph is basically regular is the thing um right because we know already there's a vertex of pretty small degree so it's not adjacent to that many guys so let d the d be like the smallest degree We know that from before that d was like less than root n-ish. So that means it's like n minus d vertices that all of degree d. Don't we look at the max degree guy? Oh, yeah, we can also look at the max degree guy. On the other hand, um... Actually, forget, forget min or max, just let d be a degree. <laughs> like, if d is a degree, then there's n minus d vertices of degree t. So if I have a vertex of huge degree, there's quite a few vertices of huge degree, and that will cause a problem.
Okay, maybe I should just try to propagate the transitivity properly. Um, no, but there's so many vertices. Like, there, there's just like, th there's a big blob. Okay, I I'm gonna do min because I think min is the most powerful. Um, like, if I have a min degree vertex, then like literally like virtually all the vertices are degree d. Like, it's practically regular. And then, like, there's, there's a few that are, like, maybe bigger. But the problem is, um, okay, here's the thing. So, ah. Like, These guys are degree D. Like, e there's, there's like a very small group of vertices here which might have degree like, which have degree larger than D. Um, but... But what, um... Yeah. So all of these have some connection here. I want there to not be a connection. So these guys have degree greater than D. Maybe it's D plus one or something. Uh, so if there's any vertex whose degree is strictly greater than D, it's connected to like everything here. Yeah, that, that's not gonna work. That, that's gonna blow up real soon. <laughs> right? Like, if there's a vertex that's... If you have this rogue vertex that's degree greater than D, because of our lemma that two non-adjacent vertices have the same degree, this can only happen if this vertex is literally connected to everyone here. Like, all, like, n minus root n guys. And, uh, that, that's gonna break really fast. Uh... Like, <laughs> that's so many edges. Holy shoot. Uh... Yeah, that's literally n minus. That's like n minus d minus one edges. So in particular, there's like at most two such vertices, right? Like you you can't have two of them because then like you get twice like n minus. So there's at most one vertex and it touches like virtually everyone, and also all of these are still degree d. Uh, so I I want to kill off the problem from here. So what what's my lower bound on the degree right now? Um So there's if, if we're not a regular graph then I have a vertex of degree n minus d choose 2 and everyone else has at least degree d choose 2 I'm optimistic that this forces d equals 2. Alright, let, let's expand. All right, I'll expand. Does someone want to plug this into Wolfram Alpha for me? Because I, I don't feel like it.
<laughs> minus n minus one, minus n minus two n. Ah, frick, I made a calculation error somewhere. D equals 2 is supposed to work here. Frick, what did I do? Uh... <laughs> no, what did I do? Does D equals 2 not work? It should, right? Because it, it, it it's in the equality case. Wait, does the original equation not hold for d equals 2? Am I just being really dumb? Oh, it's because I'm missing a plus one. Um, I need this other edge. Plus one. For that purple edge there. Let me write in purple actually. Okay, so this sign flips. This is actually n minus d all plus one. Still isn't working. Uh. Uh Help Wait, why why didn't this work? D squared minus two n plus one plus Oh it, it's n squared plus n, right? Uh yeah, there's a 2 here. Okay, so either n equals 0 or d is in 1, 2. d is 1 is not possible, so d is indeed equal to 2. So, yeah, this isn't the case. The graph is not regular. Um, awesome. And if the graph is regular, the statement is instead n times d choose 2 is equal to n choose 2, which... Oh, shoot. Is this going to have a solution? This might have solutions for some n. Okay, what do I do if the graph's regular? Then its degree is like exactly this thing. Uh, If DFS tree is too deep. So if we're in this situation where it's regular and the degree is at least four, then lemma V X. <sighs> they can't be adjacent. Your sketch is a little wrong. Uh oh. Wait. What did I screw up? V is only connected to a neighbor of X. Uh, oh, I see. Wait, why can't they be adjacent? Or, oh, I guess it's saying in equality case, that's what, ah. Right, you, you get a, 
you get at least the neighbors and now you're told that there's only the neighbors um Lemma VX. I don't see what Lemma VX will do. Oh, can't be adjacent by V, comma, U. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does Lemma VX do for you, though, right? Like, your your conclusion will still just be the degrees are the same, or am I missing something? Uh... Now you have to account for the degree layer 2 is degree u equals layer 1, degree of layer 1. Sure. But I mean, the, the graph is regular, so the degrees are just all the same. Or am I not seeing something? Oh, oh, this is just a direct proof of regular. Okay. Uh... Okay, never mind. Alright. Uh, I see. Yeah, okay, fine. Okay, so, the, but what do I do if the graph's regular? It feels like in that case I should just... It's a little annoying because for n equals, uh, when there are three vertices, the triangle actually is a regular graph. Yeah, but, I mean... Hmm. Yeah, we have a regular graph where there's always one common neighbor. Um, I know the degree is exactly like d squared minus d is n minus 1. Um, Everyone has degree three, or not? Sorry, everyone has degree D. Ah oh, man, no! Oh, no, this is the dumbest case to be stuck at. Um. Perfect matching between the subtrees of you. What does d equals 1 represent? Uh, yeah, that just doesn't happen. Like, all the degrees are just even. Yeah, like, you need, like, d equals 2. Which gives you a triangle, which annoyingly does work. And, in general... <sighs> regular, like, regular is so strong, and one common neighbor is also so strong, that I'm very sad that <laughs> its problem's not done yet. Hmm...
Is there a friendship grab that's not a triangle? Yeah, take like five triangles and stick them together at one vertex. <laughs> if you're regular, you can go back and look at the spectrum. Oh my god. G so I want to delete some vertex from G and claim G has a perfect matching. Uh... I don't want to use Spectrum though, because I don't know anything about Spectrums. Uh, uh, man. Uh. Is there a fully elementary? I mean, I'm being told there is. I'm so pissed we're stuck at the regular case. This is so stupid. Like, 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 uh, combo. Who first proved this? Probably Erdos. It seems like an Erdos result. Seems like the kind of thing Erdos would prove. The graph ha must be regular, so what, c what can I do with it? Like if it's regular, I should just be able to double count the heck out of it. Right? 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 Uh. D is min degree overall vertices? I mean, yes. But all of, like, because the graph consists of disjoint triangles, all the degrees are even, anyways. Um. <laughs> then E over vertex 1. Yeah, I mean, D equals 1 is just bad. Like, it just doesn't work. Like,. You can just forget about it. It's it came up in the calculation and it doesn't apply. Isn't degree also a multiple of three by handshake? Uh, yes, maybe. If n is not a multiple of three, when do games start? Uh, usually around like ten thirty. So unfortunately, uh, we've been on this problem for a while. Uh, should this is th I'm gonna work. Think about this is d equals. Six, I guess. So this corresponds to the case where n is thirty-one. D is either one or two, so d equals two. Oh, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Like what we said was either the graph is regular or d in one two. Like we, 
In, in the proof, when we got to D is 1, 2, we assumed there was a vertex of degree greater than D for co for co cards. Yeah. Yeah, like, w once you get to D in 1, 2, you're, you're, just, you're just done. But um, the problem is to get there, we assumed there was this monstrous vertex that was adjacent to everything. Yeah, I, I can't believe we're stuck on the regular case. This feels like it, you should just be able to, like... Like a t stereotypical vertex would look like that. And they're just all tied in and not like this somehow. Um, why don't these graphs work? Actually, maybe that was my question. Do these graphs not work? <laughs> Let me draw out the entire graph for D equals 4 and see what happens. What are we trying to do in the reduced regular case? Show it dies. Like, we just want to eliminate it. So if D equals 4, what does the entire graph look like? That's being proposed. Do I just run? Do I just run out of vertices? No way. I thought we rigged this so the double counting works out fine. Wait, I just ran out of vertices. That's not supposed to happen. I'm confused. I, I, I just ran out of vertices. Is that all that you need to do? Like, that, that can't be right. Um, they, they, they should be able to, but I can't get C4. Wait, what? This, what is going on? I, I'm, I'm doing something really stupid. Uh, sorry, one moment. You can't get a C4, right? Like, if I have six guys here and they each have... Oh, that's why. This... Well, in this picture, that's wrong. Um, but... Yeah, so... Okay, so in the in this three picture, everyone has two triangles hanging off it. And I think I should just kind of run out of steam. Or is it like there should be too many edges down here at the bottom? Um, 
Right, because here I... The, am I gonna break? Okay, well, let me do the bottom one first. Um... Yeah, a lot of people are much better at combo than me. Like, combo was always... The subject I couldn't do anything. So there's no edges that look like this. I need to add eight edges to the bottom. The paper is six pages long, then I feel a little better. <laughs> Man, you guys made me think there was some short solution I was missing. Maybe there is. Who knows? I don't understand combo. Are you also going to prove Tehran's theorem? No. I already know a proof. Oh. Wait, they even use spectral? Oh my god. Who suggests- uh. No, I sh you Are you telling me I can't push this through? You're kidding, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm so upset that regular is not finishing. Wait, is there a quick way to see that D equals 4 dice that will work in broader cases? Let me see, you want to show you can't configure the edges on the other things. Um, I need like a... Wait, I'm I'm kind of I feel like the numbers are not working out the way they're supposed to. Wait, for what it's worth, I don't think the problem felt easy to me. Like, maybe because I knew it had a name, but like just because like you can write down a double counting statement doesn't mean that the problem is easy. Like a double statement ha has to like work, and because the equality case was like different from the Jensen like. Yeah. Okay, I, I see why the equals four kind of dies. You can yeah, I need to mm, mm. Oh, this this feels messy.
<laughs> yeah, I don't I don't see how I'm gonna Well, I mean, here the graph is regular, so I just feel if you if you're going to use Jensen, now is the time. But it's it's not working. Like you just have this thing. You have this ugly thing where. Oh, this is like I have to connect to like here or something. And here and here or something. I need to make two of these. Yeah, I, I don't see how I'm gonna... Hmm. How long have I spent on this? Oh my god, it's almost... Ugh. <sighs> This is why we can't have friends in this world. Oh, that went by fast. Um, <sighs> I'm sorry, we may not get to play games today. <laughs> I was I wanted to play some Hollow Knight, but um, I don't get to it. <sighs> Alright, what's that some for? Yeah, I don't know. I do feel like it. I I think we should have gotten to the regular case faster because like that, you know. This argument is not that complicated. It's just like you you draw like there's so much structure. You kind of just draw a tree, and it's like well, hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, but and it took us forever because it's regular, and then we just stared at regular. So, sad life. Um, I think the le less one lesson, like the two lessons I learned from this, are like don't force things that aren't working. Like, but there there was no reason to expect the Yensen to really work. And also, um, don't use tools you don't know. Like, <laughs> if we had we we were, I think we spent about a bit of time like just saying the word spectral graph theory, and it sounded really cool, and none of us actually knew any spectral graph theory. Uh. Do you think it's possible to get into IMO with one year studying? Probably. I mean, possible is different from likely, but I, I think it's definitely possible. What was the hardest problem we've done on stream? <sighs> this might be a candidate. I'd have to I, I, to to get the right answer. I'm supposed to look at my website and look look for the problems that aren't written up. Actually, I might not have put them up either. I don't remember whether the failed problems go up on the archive. I don't think they do. Yeah, I think friendship might be up there as hardest, actually. Are there any research topics in Euclidean Geo? Not. <laughs> Not any real great ones. Like the problem is that standard Euclidean Geo is solved. Like you can write a program that deterministically solves 
a Euclidean geo problem. So it is kind of like, all right. <sighs> all right, SMO4. I want to try to do this and maybe one more problem. I'm hoping the... I might skip the China TST6 and try to just knock out the other two so we can get four problems for today. Okay, so first of all, this is FP to FP functional equation. Also, I just want to say this notation sucks. Like, Z is... <laughs> so, this is f of f of n equals f of n plus 1 plus 1. <laughs> okay, so there's a double f, so the first thing I'm going to do is be like low involution trick. Uh, so if I consider triple f, I get f of f of n plus 1, all plus 1. On one side and on the other side, I get f of f of n plus 1 plus 1. Oh, actually it doesn't look much better, honestly. Uh... Meh. Meh. Okay, fine. <laughs> I mean, it, it's okay. Like, it's just... I don't know. Oh, if we let... Oh, never mind. Oh, wait, that's pretty good. So let's let GF... Uh... Yeah, Kogard's observation. That's that G equals like f of f of n plus 1. Then G is linear with slope 1. So th this is actually just equal to like, um, we're working in FP, right? Uh, sorry, slope minus 1. So this is like C minus n for some constant C. Okay, uh... Well, okay, what if I put n equals f of m? Like, I still want to unnest the f's. Well, maybe I could just iterate it. Like, f of f of n plus 1 is c minus n, and then... Can I iterate it? I'm not sure. Let's just try some junk. Um, so if I put in f of n, I'll put I'll put m so it's clear. So this is a true statement because I substitute n equals f n plus one, and the inside is f of c minus m. Uh, that doesn't seem that much better. Um. Ah, fine. If the stream's getting more delayed, you can try refreshing it. Uh, yeah, the chat is not delayed. I, basically, the problem is the chat that you see on the video feed is like from also from my broadcast. So the latency it takes to take the um, the latency it takes to. What project my video onto like everywhere else in the world? What's out there? Um. Anyways, okay. Yeah. The this equation is good. What can I do with it? Well, in particular, f is surjective, right? Um. I really feel like I should just be able to run it over because I have f of c minus m is equal to. If I take f of both sides of this. Well, okay. F is surjective, so F is bijective because it's FP to FP. Um, F F surjective. So F is surjective, hence it's bijective. And and now what?
test on. <laughs> okay, come on, come on. One or the other. Yeah, that's actually cute though. It, that that thing that it's like if it's surjective, it's injective because it's an FP functional equation. I don't think I've had to do that before. Uh. Oh, actually, I think it's better to say. Sorry, it's not just F is. It's this G is linear. Oh, hang on. Okay, sorry, I changed my mind. Um, F of F of F of n is linear. That's the important thing. F of, F of the triple F is linear. It's equal to C minus N. For some... Sorry, this is actually a different constant C, right? It's like C minus N. Plus, oh, we'll, we'll be consistent, right? C minus plus 1 minus N. Why is G linear? Uh, Because... It, it looks really dumb. It's literally because G of N plus... Like, the equation says G of N plus 1 equals G of N plus 1. Also, shit, is it... Sorry, it's plus, isn't it? Why do I think it was minus? Is it domain C or FP? We changed the domain to FP, like... <laughs> yeah. Did, okay, well, okay, what, what did I do? Uh... Okay, what did I do wrong? <laughs> People are upset at me, I did something wrong. Uh... F of F of N. Th this is G of N all plus one is G of N plus one, right? Am I a crazy person? Please, it's minus one. Wait, is this okay? Did, did I screw something up? I, I think this is right, right? Oh, I misread the original problem. Oh no. Okay, I see. No wonder everyone's telling me to stop. Uh, oh no. Alright, let's try that again. Uh, oh shoot. That, 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 that actually breaks the thing we were trying to do. I. Oh no. No! Oh no. I miss I, I miss parse the original. Oh that's 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 horror in this. <sighs> so can I still salvage this? I don't think so, right? This linear thing. God, that's so sad. That's the saddest thing I've heard all day. <sighs> it's, it's one of those days, I'm telling you. I thought maybe things were going to be fine because, like, the Geo went okay, but... <laughs> we're back to everything being a disaster. <laughs> Uh, oh no. Okay, alright, alright, alright. I, I have an idea. What if I move the plus one over and then take F of both sides? Is that gonna do anything? I don't think this will do anything. Yeah, I don't think that helps. Uh, FF of N... Well... You can unwrap the right-hand side a little. It's like F of... Oh, what is it? N 
and plus two minus one. I don't even see why it's bijective anymore. Like, I don't see a reason the function must be surjective. Oh no, sorry, yeah. Okay, sorry. It, this this function is obviously surjective because uh, like f of f of n is like f of n plus one minus one. Written this way, I pick whatever I want in the range, so the range is closed under minus one, hence surjective, hence bijective. Okay, fine. Yeah, that's fine. We still we still at least have that. The only saving grace. Um, okay. Can I use that at all? F to the 4 n plus 1? <laughs> this is getting more and more desperate. <laughs> so if I, if I unwrap it the other way, this is like... F to the 4th n plus 1. <laughs> F plus <was> 1. <laughs> uh... Yeah, kick. Yeah, we can try that now, right? Does does that help? <laughs> this is just desperate. Like now, okay. So we we had the FFF and we had FFFF and now let's do FFFFF. So <laughs> F of F of n plus two minus two is equal to F of F of n plus two minus two. <laughs> it's unclear. If this is helpful at all. Or do I want to move the plus two over before? Wait, maybe I move the plus two before I do that, right? Because I feel like these plus twos are running into each other. Uh, uh. Okay, so if I do that, F, F, all right, and then I can unwrap the F one more time and I get F of N plus three minus one. And on the left, what happens? <laughs> F to the 8 n plus 2 <laughs> Is that correct? Is is that actually what I get? <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. What the heck? Okay, I, I, I see a pattern here. We now have f to the 2 to the kn plus k is equal to f of n plus k. Why is this helpful? I have no idea, but... Alright, what, what does this do? Uh... So, so F is periodic with like a period, uh, F is periodic with period 2 to the P. I, I don't, I don't see how this is at all useful. Uh, well, actually, hang on. F is, sir, no, hang on. So, F to the, hang on, hang on, hang on, uh, F to the, to the EP is okay for for this is true for every integer e and n, every positive integer e, and then so f to the okay so what is the GCD of two to the p r p minus one across all integers r? Uh, sorry, why did I change it? To, let's let's keep using e. So this GCD across all E, uh, is literally just 2 to the P minus 1. Okay, so that's not very helpful. So all, actually, it says something. All periods divide 2 to the P minus 1. Uh, hmm. 
Hang on, no, hang on. It's... 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 Wait, hang on, I think I confused myself. I got very excited for a moment. Uh, it's not 2 to the e to the p, it's 2 to the p times e, right? No, wait. No, no, it is e times p. What? Uh... Doesn't period divide p or am I high? Uh, I'm, I'm just confused. No, so if you have a permutation on p elements, the period does not have to divide p. In fact, it probably doesn't divide p unless it's a cycle. Uh... So, I mean, th this solves the problem if... It's a GCD of a bunch of numbers. Yeah, the period divides 2 to the p minus 1. Um, which is... I mean... <laughs> I, I don't know what to make of that. Um... For, so this solves the problem for p equals 2, 3, 5, 7, and I... 11... Wait, hang on, is the... hang on. What's the smallest... The smallest prime divisor... <laughs> oh, the smallest prime divisor of 2 to the p minus 1... well... Sorry, any prime divisor of 2 to the p minus 1 is necessarily 1 mod p, and in particular greater than p. So... <laughs> All fixed points. Played. Uh. Wow. Wow. This is Grant Yu's problem. <laughs> My opinion for the quality of this problem is that. You should have sent this to TSD, is my opinion. Uh, my opinion on difficulty is like, why did you put this as 4? <laughs> if this is the intended solution, why is this 4? <laughs> like... <laughs> There's a graph solution? Okay, then it's fine. Yeah, then that, that makes more sense. Because I was like, if this is the intended solution, I'm sorry, this is like not usable one for, like... <laughs> but it's great, I, I've never seen anything quite like this. Uh, how, how to get add to the 4? Yeah, so what happens is, um... Once you have f squared of n plus 1 is f of n plus 1, what I do is I, uh... take f of both sides of that, and then parse it using like this. So here, this thing, if I put double f here, gives you f to the 4. And then here is like f of thing minus 1. And then like, shit. So you get there. And then you kind of repeat it. You take f once, you run it like double and you know, you, you kind of keep doing that. <sighs> Yeah.
Yeah, th this is not even involution. This is like, like I I've, I was joked about FFF and then like quadruple F and quintuple F, but we ended up doing like F to the two to the K, and then using the fact what happens is, uh, forget the E. The E doesn't help here. Let me let me just clear it. Um, what happens is that means the period of F, like as a permutation on P elements, the period of F is uh. To the divides two to the p minus one. For example, if p equals eleven, then like f to the two thousand forty seven is yeah. Forget the GCD. Um, yeah, f to the two f to the two thousand forty seven is like a fixed point. So you're like, okay, what are the prime divisors two thousand forty seven? And you realize, wait, the smallest prime divisor two thousand forty seven is twenty three. Still bigger than 11, and actually that's true for any prime p. If a prime divisor is 2 to the p minus 1, why is that the case? Because if you take... Uh, 2 has order p, is the reason. Like, if 2 to the p is 1 mod a prime q, um, then 2 mod q has order p, because it doesn't have order 1, and p is prime. Uh, not prim primitive roof is the wrong word, it's just 2 has order p. Yeah, it's almost certainly not primitive, actually, I think. Is this last? No. Um, I'm going to... Oh, well, I am over time. I'm... I think my strategy now is I want to do the China TST to the easier China TST problem because it looks like a, it's a Geo, so I think we'll get it. Like, so far, we haven't missed a Geo on stream yet. And I think the IMO6 also looks easy. Like, the last two problems look easy, so I want to see if I can try to grab both of them. And, uh... Oh no, are people waiting? I don't... Uh... Yeah, oh yeah, if your problem doesn't get done, you'll get a refund. Actually, yeah, we're not going to get to the good function, so I'll refund you now. Um... Yeah, my, my goal is to get both the IMO6 and the China TST in the next 15 minutes. We'll see if that happens. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. Uh... Yeah, that, that sounds like such a bad quote. It's just like, I'm going to try to get a China TST and an IMO6 in 15 minutes. Uh. <laughs> but it's because I looked at the statements and they look like the kind of things that this stream is good at. So, let's run for it. I slept in excess of 11 hours today, so I don't mind staying up a little. Uh. All right, so. All right, let's let's run it. Okay. Do I recommend using GeoChipper in practice? People have very mixed opinions on this. If you, depending on who you ask, you'll get different responses. Um, I think if you don't, if you're not sure, I think you can just mix it. Like, in in the sense, like do it on paper sometimes, which you'll probably do anyways because you probably don't have your laptop with you everywhere, and don't you don't need to feel like extreme guilt for using GeoGebra, but you probably do also want some practice with the paper diagram. That's my opinion. It's like. You don't have to do just one or the other, and you probably shouldn't. Okay, so L is the reflection of what? D across EF, okay. Sure, why not? M is the reflection of E across line DF. N is the reflection of F over line DE. Are those the right L, M, N? Yeah. Line AL intersects BC at P. Okay, so... 
it's one of those symmetric things. Okay, so that's off the page, unsurprisingly. Um, complex, yeah, I had the same thought. It's just like, DF unit circle, go, go, go! Uh, However, um, yeah, maybe we can be a little less dumb about this. I think my first impression is that I actually- is- e P is not on EF, right? That, that would be too good if it was true. Yeah, it's not on EF. Um, what's the harmonic conjugate of P? It's not EF intersect BC. Hang on. Uh, can I identif identify P? Uh, in, hang on. I'm gonna draw a certain point because I have a f So my hypothesis is P might be the midpoint of like BT, which would be really good if it was true. Nope, never mind. Alright, I tried. Uh Why is P on BC? Uh isn't that the definition? Oh shoot! Uh No yeah, yeah, it's AL intersect BC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's by definition. Uh <laughs> Yeah, I also just think DEF is a better reference triangle in general. I wish I had drawn the diagram with like DEF instead, because A is like a cool point, it's like this reflection. I feel like I... The point L looks kind of familiar, I feel like I've seen it somewhere, but I can't put my finger on it. I feel like I should know something about this picture. Um, uh, okay, well, maybe this is called start drawing random stuff. Uh, okay, I is center G, W, A is circle A, E, F. The reason I'm drawing this is because I know that there's a point on here that's... Um, the inverse of G with respect to I lies on this circle and satisfies some properties. So I want to see if this point might happen to just be involved with this problem. Uh, so what what do I write? Uh, I didn't bother drawing Q. So I I'm not drawing all three because I I don't have a belief. I want to see if the problem might just be like true for like some characterization type reasons. Oh, uh, this doesn't look great. What is it? <sighs> Yeah, I don't know what to do with L. <laughs> I don't have that many configurations. Uh... Or we could just use complex numbers. H how quickly do I think I can complex bash this? Uh, estimated time. Uh, it doesn't look great. It doesn't look horrible either. Ten, three, no, I about, I can't do it in three minutes. The problem is computing P, I don't see a great way to do it. I see the idea, which is that, um... Hang on. No, never mind. I thought for a moment IAL was concurrent with AD and EF. Uh, speed run complex numbers. I can't try to accomplish Splash in stream one. And it was a disaster. Like, I, I just couldn't. How do you get P? Um, yeah, tangent D plus AL. I don't think you need the quadratic formula, right? Alright, you know what? You know what? <sighs> we, we can try it one more time. The first time, stream number one, I tried a complex batch and it was embarrassing. Like, I could not, like, expand, like, eight terms. 
We'll see if I've gotten any better at this since then. Alright, uh... Do I have a stopwatch? Uh, it's fine. Uh, I'll, I'll just say... Yeah, so, someone someone do a timing for me. <laughs> okay, so um, we'll use DEF on the unit circle, and then L is equal to um, E plus F minus EF over D. Oh shoot! Sorry, let me let me align the cursor. And A is T E F over E plus F. So how do I want to compute P? P is the point such that. Uh, so I need p to lie on d, so p plus two d squared p bar should be equal to 2p. I, I feel a little nervous about this because I think the condition for ALP collinear is going to be really bad. Uh, yeah, this, uh, this actually looks quite bad already. I, I regret doing this. Um, <sighs> well, uh, too late now. So I want to pre-compute. I'll use a determinant. P P bar one. A is two E F over E plus F. A bar is one over E plus F one. And L is the one that's really not great. Uh, is L is like E plus F minus E F over D. The conjugate of that so one over E plus one over F minus D over E F and 1. So this is supposed to equal 0 and so clean this up pp bar uh, e plus f 2ef 1 uh, uh, de plus d de plus f minus ef ef uh, e plus f minus d Sorry, I dropped the two already. Jesus, you can tell that I'm out of touch. Uh, are the degrees still correct? So this is ab about equal to. Um, by which I mean I pulled out a factor of e plus f times ef, and that doesn't change anything. Uh, Thank you, my lord babbling for the follow. Okay, so... I don't know if I can optimize this a ton. I think I should just force it. So, uh, this is p. The coefficient of p is 2ef minus something, which is d e plus f plus e squared plus f squared. Or is minus e squared minus f squared. The coefficient of p bar should be the same analogous thing with some scalar factors thrown in. So it's D, E, F, E plus F, F, minus F, F, D, F, squared. Wait, why did it not match? Did I screw up already? Oh, I screwed up already. Um, shoot. Ah. This is what happens when you are old. Sorry, there's like a factor of like E, F here. Um, and there's like a factor of, oh jeez. It doesn't fit. I don't think we're going to make 15 minutes just for this problem. Uh. TF. Okay, so... The coefficient of P is now what? It's the same thing that I had, except now it's gotten a factor of d attached. So it was uh, d times d e plus f minus e squared minus f squared. And the other one should be, I factor out the e f. Ah. 
I feel like the factors still aren't matching correctly. Uh, D squared. Oh, yeah. So, EF, E plus F, minus D, E squared plus F squared. Okay, that's okay now. And the coefficient, the constant coefficient is equal to... Shit, did I flip the sign on the p-bar? EF2, E plus F. No, that's fine. Uh... <sighs> it's one of those days, right? Okay, so D, E, F. So this one actually cancels pretty nicely, I think. 2, D, E, F, E plus F minus D. So those cancel out. So I'm left with like... E, F minus D squared. 2. And then plus... E squared, F squared. So that's actually a difference of squares, so that's that's pretty nice. Um, something feels off to me. I feel like I made a mistake somewhere, but I can't tell where. Okay, so this, this is the equation, and then... This is the other equation. Um, so, even with P, you're not, you don't have to use Menelaus. I'll, I guess you could use Menelaus, actually. That might be, is, no, it's not. Um, if you wanted to use the you use p minus b, p minus c, but there's no need. Um, you can just use like p minus. You can put the determinant with p, q, and r in it. So so did I expand this correctly? Uh, are people checking me? Because <laughs> I'm really, I'm, I'm really too old to be doing this though. Like I, I make so many mistakes on every calculation. Uh. Nope, okay. Well, well, well. <sighs> Kids. Okay, fine. So we'll compute P and um Oh, wait, so for example, this one is definitely wrong. Like I wrote d squared plus e squared f squared. That doesn't make sense, right? It's not even the same degree. So when you see that, you already, you automatically know you make a mistake somewhere. So what did I do? Uh, this is degree... Two d e plus f. It's just e f, right? Um, yeah, there's no squares on it. Okay, so let's try that again. Okay, so if I'm eliminating p bar, uh, this is this one gets multiplied by d, and then I subtract off. Oh man, I can't do this in my head anymore. Minus, uh, I, I should just use Kramer's rule so I don't have to think about this because it's equivalent anyways. Okay, so you get that. Yeah, I still think I'm doing this grudgingly because from a contest perspective, this is, I think, the right thing to do. Like, the, the calculation's small enough that you should just be able to do it in, like, an hour. Like, there's no way this should take you more than an hour if you're not dumb like me. And, uh...
Yeah, like, there's no reason- I don't trust myself to solve a problem like this synthetically in an hour. I thought it looked like it was the kind of thing where I would just recognize this, what was going on, and just run with it. But it wasn't, and so now here we are. Um, okay, so I have to expect to clean this up. So on the top, there is a factor of D that I see, and then not much else. Does more stuff cancel out? First of all, other degrees, right? Uh, two, three, okay, yeah. Top is degree six, bottom is degree four. How did that happen? That's not supposed to happen. Uh, yeah, problems, I keep making mistakes now. I just can't do this right anymore. Uh, B, one, two. So there's a mistake somewhere here. Um, this term's degree is too big. It should be... So, this was a degree 4, so this thing should be degree 4, that's fine. This is 1, 2, 3, this is 1, that's fine. Um, I just realized, why do we use Wii when writing proofs? Yes, you want to make your reader suffer with you. 1, 2, 3... <laughs> that's definitely the reason. Alright, so this is degree 1, 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, 6. It's like 5 plus 1. And then this one should be... Why is the degree not working out? This is like 6 against 4, but P should be degree 1. Um, So I made a mistake somewhere. I dropped a factor of... Oh, what am I doing? These, these things aren't one. They're supposed to be multiplied on by... Wait, what did I do? <sighs> what did I just... That, that's not right. <sighs> I see, okay, I, I see what I missed. Um, there, there should just... Okay, I think my lesson that I learned from this is just use Kramer's rule so you don't just repeatedly make mistakes. Uh, right, okay, so sort of the Kramer parts are this 2D, which comes from there, and this d squared minus EF 2EF times d squared. So here, if I am being consistent, which I'm not, uh, d squared, this bit should be the coefficient of p on the long equation, which is d, d e plus f, minus e squared minus f squared. One, two, three. All right, so now it's five on five, so p is the right degree. So that's a lesson on how to debug your work if you're incompetent like me and constantly make mistakes. All right, so... This looks... Mm. I feel like there should be more stuff that cancels than looks like it's actually going to cancel out. Uh, like, I feel like there should be more cancellations than this. Something doesn't feel good about it. Well, for, to start, there's an EF factor here, so I'm going to pull out the EF factor. On the bottom, that means there's a D factor, right? And there isn't. Okay, what did I do? <sighs> no, it doesn't. There doesn't have to be a D factor. So the top. I'm gonna pull out the two. Okay, so on the top, what do I have? It's like D to the four minus D squared E F plus E F E plus F. No, sorry, this is minus plus d squared, e squared plus f squared. It does not look like anything cancels out of there, but it looks like it's even in d, so it might factor. It looks like it factors as... No, it doesn't factor. I'm, I'm actually bothered it is not factoring.
Does it really not factor? E squared minus EF plus F squared. That might be irreducible. Oh, jeez. All right. All right, what the heck is up at the bottom? So on the bottom, I'll put this in a different color for visibility. Um, this is D to the 4, E plus F. Minus... D cubed, E squared plus F squared. So I'm going to collect things by D for... so... Okay, so this looks vaguely... This looks like I... Hmm... D times E squared plus D times E F. So D squared plus E F looks like it's a factor in the bottom, right? Like if D squared is plus E F, um then the bottom looks like it should vanish? No, it's not. <sighs> it's one of those days. It really is. Nothing goes well. Does the bottom factor? If the bottom doesn't factor, I'm in trouble. I think this is too heavy for me to continue. Uh... <sighs> there should be a negative sign outside the p-bar in the... E minus EF T E squared oh, okay yeah I flipped that sign <sighs> God Okay, so what does that do? That means this one is actually plus, and this one is actually plus. So... Astonishingly, there's this thing that happened where none of the terms actually collected. Like, the d squared terms just didn't collect. Um... So I don't even know if this actually changes anything. Which is not good, because I really think... I really wanted this to factor, um, and it doesn't look like it wants to. Why, why is it not letting me pen? Hello? I drew a rectangle. Amazing. Um, thank you, 5 Mio, for the follow. I don't get it. Why, why are none of the terms factoring? It's not supposed to be this...
Okay, if it's this messy, then I want to use the Menelaus. Um, yeah, if it's this messy, I have to use Menelaus. I can't have PQR all at the same time. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to compute P minus B over P minus C, and this will be the directed ratio of P against line BC. Um, and to do that, really, all I have to do is compute P minus B and factor it. So P minus B is uh, the previous thing minus, uh, what is B? B is 2DF over D plus F. So it's like F times, well, factor out the D. It's like D plus F times D to the 4 minus D squared EF plus EF E minus F. Sorry, E plus F. and then minus 2d times d to the 4 e plus f minus d cubed e squared plus f squared minus e squared f squared e plus f plus d e squared plus f squared times ef. That's the numerator. And the denominator is like, uh, let's see, I had 2df over d plus f. So because I'm cross multiplying, this is just 2d plus f times some blob, but the good news is that blob is the same for p minus c, like p minus c will have that same blob, so we basically don't have to care about it. And the bulk of the problem will be to look at the fat numerator there and see if it factors at all or if I'm just a very sad person. Um, if you use Mendeleev's terms might not have to simplify, I disagree. Uh, the you get an identity that should be true, just period, like over complex numbers or whatever. And yeah, like if the identity is true, it has to simplify. Like complex polynomials are very well behaved. They will not um, sneak up on you, so to speak. Okay, so let's, let's do this. So the d to the 5 term. Okay, so I'll just expand everything out because at this point I'm making so many mistakes, I just want to be careful. Oh shoot, the degrees don't match. I messed something up. Oh uh, shoot, alright, what did I do? <sighs> P is, alright, uh, I really can't skip anything anymore. P is like 2df over d plus f. So it should be minus 2d times... Oh, I forgot the 2EF. Ah, oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. There's a 2EF here. 1, 2, 3, 7, 5, 6, okay, that's degree 7. Oh, Jesus freak. I'm sorry, I think we're not going to get IMO 6 either. <laughs> I'm going to do this centered around D. Um, so conveniently, the top has only even coefficients for D, so I can kind of capitalize on that. So the, the first guy is D 2EF times D to the fifth. The coefficient of D to the four is 2EF squared times D to the four. The coefficient of D cubed is 2EF. Sorry, I should just factor out the two, right? Two, two, two. Two, two. <sighs> okay. So the d, d cubed coefficient is EF times E squared plus E squared F squared plus EF. The D squared coefficient is E x E squared F cubed. 
The d coefficient is e squared f squared e plus f. And the constant coefficient is e squared f cubed e plus f. <sighs> Jesus. Alright, and then now the other part is... Uh, it's already split with coefficient, just like e plus f d to the 4 d to the 5. Wait, how come the degrees still don't match? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, d to the 5, e plus f, d to the 5, e, f, 7, 4, 5, 6. Okay, what did I do? I can't do anything right. Unintelligent. 4, 5. There's no F, that's the problem. Um, it's just E. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. Okay, so all these coefficients go down by one. Uh, e squared f, and then this is just the constant coefficient is e f e squared f squared e plus f. Okay, cool. All right, the thing that's being subtracted is e plus f d to the 5, and then minus e squared plus f squared d to the 4, and then, sorry, this is plus, and this is minus e squared plus f squared And then minus plus e squared s squared e plus f. I bet I screwed up the sign. I bet those constant terms are supposed to cancel because otherwise this degree feels too high for the identity to be true. Uh, PQR lie on line IO. <sighs> it wouldn't help. I would actually still use them in LLAS, I think. Yeah, like the calculation has to work. That's what makes this complex number so reliable. Like, you know that at the end, if you don't make a mistake, which apparently is a very uh, dubious <laughs> assumption for me, uh, then it's supposed to all, you know, it, it has to work. Okay, this purple thing is wrong. The d coefficient shouldn't be d e squared f. The e f e plus f there is wrong um, because that coefficient is wrong. There's a d here. Oh no, that, that actually messes a lot of things up. Oh, actually, I think it just changes this one term to a square and changes this term to times d. Okay, so now mass cancellation happens. Yay! Uh, yay! Uh, wait, hang on. For five, one, two, e squared, f squared, e, f, e squared, th this one should be d squared. 
Um, yeah, so everything should be degree 6, and any time that's not the degree 6 is a mistake. Uh, EQ, E squared, F squared. Alright, so that kind of doesn't cancel. Do I get any cancel on D to the 4? No. Do I get a cancel on D to the 5? A little bit. Um, Okay, so when the dust settles, what do I get? I get minus f times d to the 5 plus ef times d to the 4 or e squared plus ef plus f squared on d to the 4 I'm um, off screen, huh? And then on d cubed, there's no, nothing to counter it, so it's just e e squared plus e f plus f squared times d cubed. That's that whole term there. And then what do I get on the d squared? It's e squared f squared. Should be a minus sign. Minus EF times E squared minus EF plus F squared. Okay, um... <sighs> Did I make a mistake? This doesn't feel correct either. <laughs> uh, yes, I made a mistake. Uh, there's a cross here that's through the wrong term. Um, this is here. D squared e cubed f. Okay, so the d squared coefficient is very weird. Oh, actually, it's it's better this way, I think, because more stuff cancels. This thing now cancels this guy, right? And you just get minus uh, e f cubed times d squared. Okay, so this factor, this should factor, at the very least, there's a d squared that factors out. I get f times d cubed uh, minus e f squared times d, sorry, no, no, just e f cubed, that's, that's all. And then I get this thing where uh, the other term is like plus e squared plus ef plus f squared. Uh, and then this is just like d times d minus e. <sighs> All right. Wait, why didn't that factor? That's not supposed to happen. This is supposed to factor now. Otherwise, the identity can't be true. This is irreducible. I made a mistake. It's f d q minus e f squared. Yeah, something's wrong. It's it, it better factor by now because if it doesn't, the it needs to factor for the problem to be true. Um. Uh. They lie on the Euler line of DEF. That's hor. If so, then something is really wrong with my expression for P because nothing like. Uh. Uh, 
Yeah, something's very wrong with my expression for P if if they lie on the Euler line. Uh Uh, now I know why I didn't do the well, okay. Thank you, ARY Anger2707 for the follow. EFE plus F. Okay, actually, I want to check something else. Does this... I think all these coefficients should have the... Yeah, the co in every expression I have, the sum of the coefficients is like vanishing. So you can uh, the other way I can debug this is by checking whether when I plug in all ones if I get the right thing. And I don't know if that's one two one zero one zero. So something's definitely wrong here because when I plug in all, all of equal things, I don't vanish. So when I did this P minus B thing, um, I was supposed to get like stuff that the purple thing and the red thing each should sort of have that cancellation property. And it doesn't look true. One, two, minus one, minus two. Yeah, this is like plus two. So there's a... Something went wrong in this expansion here. So e d to the 5, d to the 4 is f e. Am I missing some d squared terms? e f e squared plus... Doesn't minus b not make him vanish? No, because this denominator is also non-vanished. Like this denominator also vanishes when d equals e equals f. So yeah. Um Yeah, I better just redo this whole purple section with the... D squared and... I think I should redo this whole, the lower order terms. Alright, so I got up to d cubed. The d squared term comes from two contributions. One is that there's a contribution of minus e f e squared plus f squared plus e f times d squared. The other is that there's a contribution of e squared f e plus f times d squared. And then there's a contribution of minus uh, sorry, plus t e squared f e plus f. 
sorry, e squared f squared e plus f times d. Okay, so does this have the sign property I want? Uh, 1, 2, minus 1, minus 4, plus 2, plus 2. So that, that actually cancels properly now. And first I'll do the internal cancelling in the purple. So there's like an e cubed f and an e cubed f that kill each other off. And I think that's the e squared f squared uh, kills off this e squared f squared as well. So that leaves you with an f squared d squared. That's the only... S and then... What am I doing? Uh, this e squared f squared kills off this e squared f squared. So the only survivor here is an f squared, and then you have this term. So then when I do the actual cancel... Okay, so here... Um, Does the D term not cancel? Why did I think it canceled a moment ago? E squared F squared E plus F D. Oh no, they they're they're not cancelling. Uh <sighs> So if I'm believing what my calculations are giving me, which I don't, um then I get Minus E F squared minus E F it's like minus E F times D squared. This is like E squared plus two F squared. And then the D the linear term is like two E squared F squared E plus F. So this thing turns into something a lot worse. Yeah, I don't believe that. Uh, I think I definitely made a sign error somewhere. Ah, why? Why won't it work? This sign comes from that sign. Did these spluce are these signs actually flipped? No, they're not, right? This is just a plus, and that's a minus. <sighs> I think those blue signs are not flipped. Yeah, yeah, this is should be a plus and this should be a minus. Okay, cool. So 
in this denominator, um, sh this should be plus, this should be minus, so here these signs are minus and plus. Okay, that, that looks much better. Because I was like, I don't think there should be a coefficient of 2. So e squared, f squared, and... Yeah, so now, now these guys do cancel out. oop de doo shoo, shoo. And then uh, this survivor actually kills off this survivor and leaves just the e squared. Alright. So for the low order terms, I end up with just d plus d squared e f. Uh e cubed fd squared. And once I factor out the d squared... This is plus. And it's actually just e cubed f. Okay, so this is d squared times like f of e minus d, e squared plus e d plus d squared plus d, d minus e, e squared plus e f plus f squared. Okay, so... Okay, after that bloodbath, um... I don't know if I should write it this way. I wonder if the correct thing to do is to, um... Does this factor now? It feels like it kind of looks like it's going to factor. Like, I see the... Is it not e cubed plus f cubed? No, it, it is actually d cubed. Oh wait, no, t, t equals e is a factor. Ah, ah. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. Okay, t equals e factors out. So what, what happens after d minus e factors out? It's like um, d e squared plus e f plus f squared minus f d squared plus d e plus e squared. I think yes, and when, once it's down to here, actually, I can see two terms that cancel. This guy cancels off that guy, so it's like d e squared plus d f squared minus f d squared minus f e squared. These vanish if there, there's a symmetry somewhere here. There's a d equals f symmetry. Yeah, so this is equal to d squared d minus e d minus f. So the fd, this is minus df here, df. sorry, plus df, de plus, so D, df squared minus fd squared will, when I pull out d minus f, give me minus df, yeah. And the other one is d minus f, which is e squared. Okay, so, uh, cool. That's the thing. So, long story short, um, if I go all the way back, <sighs> p minus b is equal to so it was like f over d plus f, and then denominator. And then if I put it over p minus c, 
uh, that denominator will go away because it's common between yeah, it's the one inherited from thing. So to do the bottom one, all I have to do is switch the rules of D and E, or F and E. So you'll get uh, D minus F, D minus E. Actually, so th that part actually stays the same. And then you get F squared minus D E. Okay. And now, if you cyclically multiply, everything dies because it's, you know, just kind of cyclic. And you get plus one, as desired. Okay. Imagine if I just didn't make mistakes. Wouldn't that be something? <sighs> Are you going to write this up and post it? Eventually. I mean, I, mean, I think once, once you post it without the mistakes, I don't think it's that long. So, <sighs> I did not quite meet the quota. I sort of thought, I thought there was no way this would take more than one hour. And, um... If I had a slightly higher blood alcohol concentration, it might have. So I think I was overconfident. Um, don't be overconfident. <laughs> but I mean, so, because if you look at the calculation when you zoom out, this is it. Like if you don't make mistakes, if it's on one page. The problem is I make lots of mistakes. <laughs> like I couldn't, I couldn't expand more than like, Like here, let, let me actually put them in a side-by-side -side view for comparison. H how do I box select? Uh, no, no, that's not what I want to do. Oh, freaking. How do you box select? Haha. Okay, and then I move this there. Like, if you look, if you put this in perspective, um, like, the problem is that I'm old and I can't expand anymore. Like, how many terms are actually here? Right? Like, the longest expression is this one for sure. How many terms does it have? Um, like, 20. Like, it shouldn't be that hard to expand 20 terms. And the problem is, well, one is that I'm old and dumb, and the other is that I'm working on an iPad, and when you work on an iPad, it's just automatically harder to expand, I think. Uh, but, like, all of you people who are still taking the Amy, I think, should just be able to do this. Like, <laughs> first successful one, also, like, second attempt. Like, the f well, okay, to be fair, stream one, I also had the complex bash attempt did finish, it just was painful. Um, yeah. Ugh, I'm so bad. Like, I made, like, 10 errors expanding 20 terms. Like, literally 10 different errors with a 20 term expansion. It's just that. <sighs> ah. I think when I upload this to YouTube, I might like speed it up by 2x or something yeah literally i made an error every two times like literally that's how bad i am at this now i just i just can't do it i think the ipad just makes it worse like it's so hard to expand on an ipad because it's <sighs> one term per two errors Hey, if you make one term per two errors, but the two errors are both sign errors, then you're completely fine. <laughs> At least I got it in the end. I mean, it's 20 terms, like there's no way that... If you have an hour, you should be able to expand 20 terms, right? Like, it should not take you three minutes to compute each term. Angry coach mode. Uh, yeah. 
I mean, so if you're actually taking a contest and you um like have something like this where it's like about 20 terms, the correct thing to do is you do it twice and then just diff them to see where they don't line up and you just have to fix the mistakes. And like, you know, if it takes you 10 minutes to do once, it'll take you 20 minutes to do it twice and, and then it's just fine. <laughs> <sighs> it's almost midnight already. Oh no. <laughs> Disaster stream. Okay. Uh yeah, I'm sorry. We might have to do Hollow Knight next week. Do you wanna try to do the IMO6 and see if we can just wipe it out? <sighs> I'm so upset right now. Okay, let's do the IO6. I'm so sad. Because this took like four times longer than it needed to because I just couldn't expand correctly. Like, I made a sign error here and then another sign error here. And then like... Another sign error here. Like, I actually left the errors in red so you can see where they were. Like, it's just like error every line. Um, what's the hardest math problem you've solved? <sighs> Check my papers. I think the hardest one might be... Uh, I'm not sure which one is the hardest, actually. The, the RE papers I have are different types of hard, I think. But yeah. Sign errors, and then also like the fact that the D was missing, like there was a D missing somewhere and I was just getting... This D mid being missing was really bad. So there's literally like about, you can see literally like 10-ish errors on the page because I just can't expand 20 pages correctly. But you look at this, if you handwrite it, you can fit it on two pages for sure. Like for sure you can fit this in less than two pages of handwritten work. Yeah, if your handwriting is small, you can fit in one page. Like, when I type it, I, it's definitely going to be, like, less than two pages. Okay, let's do the IMO6. Yeah, uh... Well, it, it's a it's an IMO6 that looks easy, so we can see whether my um, radar is correct. Because if you have a 19, a convex 1990, yeah, whatever, um, we're, we're going to let Zeta be a primitive 1990 root of unity. <laughs> and so... Uh, More complex! So what we want is like sum of zeta uh, pi if an squared from n equals 1, that's 0 to 1989 of an of zeta to the n to be equal to 0. That's what this problem is saying. I want to pick the an such that this identity is true. Now, what identities does 1990 satisfy? If 1990 was prime, we would be dead because you can't do this with energy coefficients. But 99 is not prime, and it is equal to 2 times 5 times 190 to... Okay, so... Wait, how do you do this? <laughs> uh... Shit, maybe this might not, will be not be as fast as I thought it was. Uh Well I don't know. Let's we'll see how late I have to make myself stay up tonight. Now sums is not a bad reflex on this, I think. I'm not sure it applies here. Um, in the sense that... What is he eating? Um, dinner. Steamed buns.
what kind? Uh, these are like the nice steamed buns that have like red roast pork in them. They're really good. And they're really easy to make because I can't cook. One hundred ninety nine is prime, right? Uh, it's not this one. Two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen. Yeah. Um. Fine. Hmm. So if I take differences <sighs> um yeah Like right now, the thing that's nice is I have a factor of two, so I can get two vectors to cancel each other out. By, um, like there, there's a there's like this pairing, and then there's like this five, which lets me. Is this problem true if I replace nineteen ninety with ten? Actually, that's my question. Um, because the one ninety nine is the one that you can't really do much about. But if I do like ten, can I get the identity to work out? Um, if I have, it boils down to saying you have some identity on the primitive fifth roots, so for that to work, they actually actually be all equal. Okay, so it's not possible with ten, and I actually need to use the one ninety nine somehow. So I'm gonna start by um, cutting everything in half. Uh, nine nine four. And so, well, we'll, we'll phrase it this way. We'll work with um, 90, like, let's let omega be a uh, 1995th root of unity. I think this is right because of the, you want to, there, there's no reason to deal with the. Okay, so there's a nine, I, I have some identity that's true for 995th root of unity. And, um,. A 995th root of unity has a minimal polynomial of degree like 995. So this is like 4 times 198 ish. Which isn't great. Um, I, I don't really like this. It holds for all. N I actually think it's false for 10. I don't think you can do it with 10. Pair 2n minus 1 squared with 2n squared. Yeah, even then, like, it's not true that, like, uh, like, 3... If you do this with 10, right, then you you want something that's a fifth root of unity. So you, you want an identity that looks like this. But because 5 is prime, um, to get 4n minus 1, wait, what? Yeah, yeah, like, like... I agree that seems like the nicest thing to do, but it's not- it won't work for 10, right? Because for this identity to be true for a fifth root of unity, um, you need a n squared minus b n squared to be constant, I think. Wait, that's not true. Uh, no, for, for integer coefficients it's true. Like, if, uh, if 995 was prime, actually, I think the problem would just be false. Um, Wait, 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 
So it is making sense. Like my claim is that I think the problem is false if you replace 1990 with 10, because you pair up the roots, as I said, which is fine. But then what you find after you do that is that you get a sum of fifth, uh, fifth roots of unity that sums to zero. And the only way that happens is if the roots all have equal magnitudes, and then that requires things to be constant. So what happens is you need to like pair the squares from one square to ten squared such that the common differences are equal, and I don't think that's possible. Sorry, well, Warren, am I, am I making sense? Like, I... Like, if you have a regular pentagon with side lanes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the problem is false. Like, if I tell you a pentagon is equal angular and tell you the side lanes, that determines the pentagon, and this pentagon does not close. Like, there's no equilateral pentagon with side lanes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in any order. Yeah. Actually, in general, an equilateral prime gon, like an equilateral, say, equilateral pentagon with integer side lengths must be equilateral. This is a theorem, like... A regular p gon with integer sides is equilateral. And this is for number theoretic reasons. So my point is that you cannot do this. Like, I, I agree it looks nice, but it doesn't- it provably does not work. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, also, like, it's true for regular as well, but that's not what we want. Is it like some irrational thing? Oh, because what happens is what you do is you have like a0 plus a1x. Uh, Alright, I'm just explaining this proof. Um, what happens is you get the coefficients up to p minus 1 of omega to the p minus 1 is equal to 0. And so, hence, omega is a root of some ai x to the i. And this polynomial but the minimal polynomial of omega is some um, x to the i of the same degree, so it required to be equilateral. So for 5, it's just not true. And what the problem is saying is because we have 995, which is not prime, it is nine, 4 times 198, which is 792, um, that means the problem is possible, although I don't know how to construct it yet, it's not like obviously impossible. Yeah, not obviously impossible. So yes, 995 being not prime is what's going to make this problem doable. And I have to figure out why. Uh, <laughs> The solutions are very convoluted and tricky. That's not good news. I thought this was going to be easy. I was just like, oh, it looks like you can just complex it. Awesome. Oh, no. All right. Yeah, basically, I want to pair up the squares into two halves and then, like, subtract them and then, like, you know. Oh, Jesus, frick. Oh, I'm not going to get any sleep. Yeah. I mean, I think it has to be pairing because you you need to use the two. Um, also, it's just easier that way. Like, it's sort of you, you trade off that evenness for something that makes the problem much more constrained. Grouping to fives would be nice if it were possible. I am not convinced that it's possible to group them into sets of five. Like one strategy would be to um, like break this thing into yeah groups of five, such that in each group of five. And then rotating it. Uh, I mean, what, what happens is you, you break it into 199 groups of 5, such that each group, like, I don't know, vanishes, maybe? I do think it has to be some sort of arithmetic progression thing, because here, here's the thing. This is a problem statement, when, when I see this problem statement is true, it's like, holy shoot, this is true, question mark. 
because you expect if I pick, um, if I pick a random set of numbers with probability zero, does the polygon close? And not even it's only possible probability zero, it's like probability like zero squared in the way, right? Like you need both the x and y component to work out. So the fact that like this set of lengths actually works is like mind blowing. Like the fact that it has a natural description and it will actually close and it has to be like very specifically chosen. Like you won't be able to do it with like, it's very unlikely cubes would work for example. Like there's just no way, I think. I might eat those words. Maybe like polynomials are good, but um, yeah. If it, if it was determined that, then you just <laughs> that'd be horrifying. All right, so what what do I do? Like I do the pairing idea. I can get linear things. Do I think that like three, seven, eleven will carry? Oh wait, does this just work? Um... Three thousand nine hundred eighty-one. Okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. So, um, we'll do the following. We'll look at three omega to the, um, zero plus one ninety-nine. Amazing. All right, yeah, I see it, I see it. So this, oh, right, this is not as bad as I thought it'd be. I thought it was going to be something really involved. Um. Granted, uh, Warren basically knows the solution, I think. So we're going to start with this identity. This is a true identity. Actually, it's not. I lied. This is this is a false identity. This gives you a complex number z. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to rig it with the next se guys in the sequence. 23, 27, 31, 35, 39. This is like, uh, 1... 200, 9, alright, yeah, alright, yeah, that's gonna work. And it turns out this is Omega Z, because all I did, you can sh shift out the 20s, and then it's like, you know, whatever. Okay, and then you can do the same thing again, Omega squared, um... Wait, hang on. Does this work? I feel like I rotated it the wrong way. I really want to rotate by... Um... Sorry, if I sum these, I don't get the... <sighs> Omega is the 995th root of unity. I have 199 equations. I need to hit the multiples of 5, I think. I, I need this one to say omega to the 5, not omega to the... Does this mess things up? I don't think it should. I think this is okay. This, this should work now, and then I'll do this for ten. And uh, here, let's do yeah, uh, fifty-one, fifty-five, fifty-nine, and now this is like two hundred nine, four hundred nine, six hundred seven, eight hundred six. These are true statements, right? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, so we'll, we'll call this one Z and the others are similar. And then... Why Omega to the 5 in the last inequality? Um... Why here? I mean, th this is this previous equation multiplied by omega to the fifth, right? Oh shoot, 4034. Ah! Ah! Okay. Yeah, and then this will just work. So the two is there, the two, the pairing, and the two that you kill off the um, squares, so you get these things that are APs, and then. 43 omega to the 5 should be- Ah! No! Oh, the typos don't end. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it is omega. Alright, we did it. Oh, man. I've been doing math for 4 hours now. Congratulate me. Uh, what a day. It's like, uh, it's the day where, like, FTW doesn't- but the stream starts with OBS not working, and then FTW not working, and then I spend an hour trying to prove the friendship theorem, and then I spend, like, another, like, I spend two hours trying to prove the friendship theorem, and, like, another hour, like, miss complex bashing. Try, like, trying to complex bash and failing. So. <laughs> oh, man, that was not a chill stream. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, oh god. Yeah, the SMO problems went really well. <laughs> this problem went pretty well too. We got friendship? No, we didn't get friendship. We reduced it to case where it was regular and then like died. Like we just stared at it. was like, the graph is regular. We should be able to finish the problem now. And then we couldn't finish. And I was like, okay. Uh, yeah, no, we, did, we didn't finish the friendship theorem. We gave up after two hours. <laughs> oh, happy almost birthday. Uh, have game sections of the stream been cancelled? Do you guys still want to play games? <laughs> yeah, we cancelled FTW because I couldn't get FTW to work. But I think Steam probably works? Uh, okay. How about I play a bit of Hollow Knight? I think that's a game that doesn't require me to think too much. Because holy crap, I'm tired. Yeah, honestly, when I play Hollow Knight, I feel like I'm just like enjoying the art because I'm so bad at the actual mechanics and also... Uh... <sighs> I should try out Cosmic Express. Okay, I will add that to my wish list. I, I've blown a bit too much money on Steam games recently, so I'm telling myself I need to finish the ones that I actually purchased before I buy more. <laughs> Did you ever do more than this many hours of Olympia proms in high school? Uh, I mean, it depends on the day. I certainly didn't go anywhere close to 4 hours on a regular day, but like there were days where I would just get really absorbed in like a single IMO6 and it would take me like 7 hours. Um, but yeah, where do you recommend study Pigon with complex numbers? Uh, you can read. Yeah, a, a contest is four and a half hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so really, what's happening is integer polynomials. Like, there's not that much geometry. The geometry is just like, um, here's here's the TLDR. If I have a polygon. And it's convex and equal angular, then it's the sum of a bunch of like powers of a primitive root of unity. Sort of like we did here. Like you don't see much variation on this. It's just like equal angular polygons are sums of roots of unity. So what you're ask actually wanting to study is um how do integer polynomials work? And for that, um you can read the algebraic number theory chapters of napkin. <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah, like the the su the subject you're looking for is called algebraic number theory. Also, I failed to install Hollow Knight before coming here, so we are going to take a uh, like. Wow, there's like a gigabyte of content to. <laughs> We're gonna take a uh, like. Do I know Carlos Shine? Yeah, he's great. Uh, I I learned geometry from him when I was a ninth grader at my first mob. That was, <sighs> you know, when I first learned that the circumcenter of BIC lies on the circumcircle, I got that from like his hand that I remember very clearly. Uh, that was ten years ago. Hey, yeah, glad to hear he's still around. Um. I got to see him at the 2017 IMO, I was like, oh man. Good old days, no. Wait, does this game not have Steam save? I don't- do I not have my progress from when I played this in California? That's unfortunate. Uh, so we can play Hollow Knight, but I have to start over because I played the game when I was in California, and apparently, um, <laughs> well, that makes this really easy. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. Fine. I'm gonna be here for a while. As in, I'll be in Boston for a while, and uh, R.I.P. Uh, Damn it. No, we didn't do too much. Most of the time was me repeatedly dying to like that one boss because I'm so bad at jumping. Uh so not not much loss, but also like a little annoying. Okay, so we, we will, uh, for entertainment value, replay the first hour of this game, I guess. Oh wait, no! It saved my progress after all. Okay, I just don't know then. I was confused because it was telling me to like set up the, the like options and whatever again but here we are all right we're back good morning oh well and I have to set all the keybinds because I Uh, I can be inventory, that's fine. Alright. Thanks for coming to the stream and for the subscription to the Aquin. Hope to see you again sometime. Okay, so what did we learn last time? We learned that there's a big thing down there I should go find. Okay. Is this some sort of RPG? 
Um, it said platform adventure. I think the main thing is it's really pretty. Like, holy crap, the art is so good. Thank you, Dakotius, for the follow. I'm not sure what the story will be, because I've never played this game before. It's a blind playthrough. Thank you, Arbitrary Renaissance, for the follow. Oh, yeah, now we're here, I can change to game. Give the- ah! Give the game its due credit. We're playing Hollow Knight. So let's explore a bit. Okay, so I'm like here. So I want to go down and then down. Huh. I wonder if I'll be able to jump through. I don't know if that place with the... Hmm, whatever. We'll find out soon. Or the other thing I can do is just farm enough money to buy the compass. That's an, also an option. But as long as I'm just beating up NPCs, I might as well explore the map as well. Ah! Could take a while to get enough money to buy that compass from last time. So... wait. Oh, the, the down is somewhere else. Oh man, scary! Money! Ha <laughs> ha Okay, so I'm supposed to go down here, right? And see what the world has to... Whoa, whoa! Hey, how did I do that? Is it? Wait, how did I pull up the big map just now? I pressed the button and it let me use the big map. Uh, oh, is it I? So my inventory consists of a map and that's all I have. Alright, fine. Should I explore this bit before I go down? Nah, it's okay. I, actually, I think I've been here already. I wonder if it's like, as I explore, the rooms will... ...tell me that I've been there? Huh, it's locked. I don't seem to be able to get through. Okay, fine. Okay, where else have I not explored? Just so, that entrance is blocked off, so I want to go east and then down. Let's go all the way east and down. Ah! I hate jumping! Okay... Oh my god. I'm so bad at not getting damage. Alright, keep going. Get 
get the money, get the money. I almost have enough for a compass, ha ha ha. Okay, so this is where I want to go all the way down. Or I could explore to the west places. There's a lot of places to go. Ah! Or I could just fall down because I'm not competent. God. See, if the money falls in the spikes, I can't get it. Alright, jumping. Jump. Jump. I'm not sure what that just did. Did it just give me a life back or something? The heck is this? Okay, I don't think I can wall jump yet, so no thank you. Um, how do I get back? Do I just... yeah. Oh, it's the map dude again. I forget how I interact. What button do I press? Uh... Chocolate, correct this. Mm -hmm. ah! Oh, that is scary. That is a lot of spikes. Uh That doesn't look good. I saw something move. Is that an enemy? Oh jeez, oh, holy shit. Seems like my weapon's ineffective. Yeah, it looks like I can't get up there either. Ah, jeez. Ah. All right, this is just for money. Yeah, it's nice. I remember when I played Mario, it's like the money would disappear after a while, and it's like that doesn't make sense. Why would money just disappear? Like that's that doesn't make any sense. Like you know. You know, it's it's just metal. Why should it go away? So I'm glad this game did not follow that example. And the money actually stays around for you to pick up. A uh, spiral similarity is a homography. Yes, because rotation is homography and homotony is homography. And though you compose, ooh, wow, hit passage.
Who am I my name? Do I want to explore down there? This just has- Ah! Holy shit. No! I don't want a boss battle! No! Holy fuck. I was not here for a boss battle! No! No! I just wanted to collect money and explore! Why is there a boss battle? Oh fuck, there's two! Holy shit! Money, get the money! Ah! Stay alive! Ah! Oh. I don't think I'm gonna make it. I'm so bad. Ah! Ah! Now there's gonna be more, right? Oh, never mind. I'm free. I'm free. I oh. <laughs> got them. Up. Okay. Jesus, man. Since when did the boss battles start with no warning whatsoever? Also, where is this on the map? Uncharted territory. Ah. <sighs> Yeah. I mean, if you're gonna die, I, I thought I was just gonna die for sure, so I was just like, let's maximize the amount of money obtained. Because, you know, if you're if you're dead, might as well get the money so that when you come back later, you have more cash on hand. But, oh my god. No, we're not doing that again. We're not doing that again. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> We are going to save our progress and buy a compass. Is it still going? Oh, glad you asked. Uh, basically what happened was I did really badly on math today. So, um, I spent four hours doing math from like 8 to 12 Eastern. And so now we're finally getting to play a bit of video games. By which I mean, I am, uh, jumping up and down things. Shoot, this is the wrong- Oh, I made this mistake before. This is not the highest entrance. Alright. Highest exit. We're doing math- what topic? Uh... We tried to prove the friendship theorem and it did not go well. Also, I tried a complex bash of Geo and it also went really badly, although at least we finished. Ah!
Ow. You know, I really wish these enemies didn't respawn. Although, I guess it gives me more cash this way, but like... I don't know, it's kind of annoying you have to beat them over and over. <laughs> Ascend. Papanada. Ah, <sighs> Papanada. Oh, man. I feel sorry for her. Uduna, Nahato. All the houses are empty. <laughs> awesome. Also, I only get to wear three. Okay, well, whatever. Wow, now I can see where I am. Why is there a boss battle without warning? It's very rude. Alright. Alright. Okay, so... It is almost 1am here, which means I should get to bed. Um... Yeah, thanks you guys for sticking around through um, disaster, multiple disasters. Uh, <laughs> oh, what a day. Like, if I had known, I would have said, like... There, there are some better stream titles I could have picked if I knew today was going to end up like this. Uh, like... Ugh. Why doesn't Flash work? I don't get it. Alright. Okay, yeah. Thanks everyone for... Evan Chen is a snack. Oh, that's how you pronounce it. Yeah. Thanks for everyone for supporting the stream. Especially for the two subscribers today. I'll see you next time. Yeah, Flash is ending. I thought it should at least still work for now, but I couldn't get for the win to load today. I guess because Arch Linux keeps things pretty up to date. Um, yeah, Flash has been... It's about time Flash died, honestly. <laughs> I hope... I know Levin said they had a JavaScript client, it just didn't work super well. And I'd rather have a JavaScript client that kind of works than no client at all. So, I hope they let us use it, but they have a lot of things on their plate. Alright, see y'all.